And that's a different kind of Thanksgiving you and I are used to. And we would like to explore this kind of Thanksgiving using the story that Yo-Yo led us to read. And this different kind of Thanksgiving, that's the Thanksgiving that Jesus demonstrated. And that's the Thanksgiving I want to talk about today. So before we continue, let's commit this uh, message to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for your word, because your word gives us life. We pray that you open our eyes to see your reason why we need to give thanks. In all circumstances, more importantly, give us the courage to act upon it after I receive the message. Make us the most grateful, hopeful, and joyful people on earth, because it is your will for us in Christ Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today's miracle, using five loaves and two fish, are the miracle that is a miracle that is recorded in all four Gospels. <coughs> You know that it's important if it is repeated four times in the Bible. And the context of today's story is this. Baptist John, who baptized Jesus, was killed, was beheaded by King Herod. And so Jesus retreated to a desert place to pray. And he went into solitude by boat and to get out of the crowd. But the crowds already received the healing. So they want more healing. There's more sick people want to be healed. So they went on foot to the place they thought that Jesus was going. And they arrived prior to Jesus arriving. So when Jesus landed and the crowds are already waiting for Jesus, and there are so many, many of them. So, let's just have one word on healing. If you think that church should be filled with smart and cute people, and we should think again. Yes, church should be filled with cute and smart people. But Jesus said that healthy do not look for doctors. People in church may not all appear normal to you. And some even appear that needs a lot of help. And the truth is that we all need healing. And just like all of us need salvation. And I still remember that one time that when, when when God is using a messenger to ask me to reflect what kind of problem I have, I said to God, and I have no problem. I find myself perfect. And in retrospect, that's the time I need help most. So in the same way, as a congregation, we all need healing. And this congregation needs healing, both physical and emotional. So now you turn to each other and say, He can heal you. Now you can turn to each other, say to each other, He can heal you. He can heal you. <laughs> Jesus was a healer 2,000 years ago. He can still heal you today, emotionally, physically. And what struck me about this message is Jesus' compassion. So if you read Matthew 14, so when Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion. He had compassion on them. Even though he probably has a lot on his mind. Mourning for Baptist John and thinking about what he needs to do later on. But as soon as he saw the crowd, he had compassion on them and healed they're sick.
we as a congregation need to have a compassion, not only to the people who are far, but also to the people who are close. So on, um, on Friday, on Black Friday, and uh, a group of us, the teens and the uh, parents, we prepared breakfast for 200 people and cooked like six large trays of oatmeal. And we elect Chris uh, as our master chef, chef of uh, cooking oatmeal and because he's most skillful. And so that shows compassion. It's actually a lot of times it's easier to show compassion to strangers because they're not closer to us. And it's also important to show compassion to those who are around us. And as a congregation, we need to show compassion to, to people who are far and close to us. And this compassion attracts people to Jesus. Because the people know when they come to Jesus, Jesus will not drive them away. So even though Jesus was having the, the thought to mourn for Baptist John and to pray in solitude, but as soon as he saw the crowd, he had compassion. And then, next, the people are hungry. And the evening approached, the disciples came to Jesus say, This is a remote place. It's already getting late. Send the crowds away. So they can go to the village and buy themselves some food. And uh, Jesus replied, They do not need to go away. Give them something to eat. And what do the disciples have? Five loaves and two fish. And in other Gospels, it's recorded, those five loaves and two fish are actually not from disciples. They are from a teenager, a child. And so some joke is like those uh, disciples probably kind of uh, get the food from the, the child by force because no child wants to yield anything. But anyhow, the disciples have five loaves and two fish. And then Jesus said, feed them. And the disciple was like, it's impossible. This is five loaves. Maybe okay for five guys, but not for 5,000. And then Jesus did something amazing. So Disciples answer, we only have five loaves and two fish. And Jesus did something amazing. He took the five loaves and two fish. He looking up to heaven and gave thanks and broke the loaves. And before this, actually, and Jesus asked all the people to sit down. In Gospel Luke, it says, all the people will sit down 50 in a row. So our God is a God of order and health. So he wants to restore order and health. Even before the miracle happened, Christ, Jesus, doesn't want a mob saying everybody flock to the food, like trample upon each other. He asked people to sit down, 50 in a row, to receive the miracles. And then he look up to heaven and give thanks. Wait a minute. It is the same five loaves and the two fish that disciples saw and took. But why did Jesus give thanks? and disciples did not. Why did 
Jesus gives thanks, but the disciples did not give thanks. So that speaks to the huge contrast be between Jesus' thanksgiving and our thanksgiving. So I started this message by asking you, what do we thankful? And we are thankful for our family, for our friends, and some teens also said they're thankful for their mom, for their dog, for their cat. And those are the things that we received. So our thanksgiving, by and large, is for the things that we have received. Right? If you think about this, we give thanks to the things we can see. And we give thanks to the things that we have received. When Jesus took the bread, I believe he did thank God for the things he had received. But more importantly, he gives thanks for the things that God will accomplish. This is not a random guess. Jesus gives thanks not only for the things in his hand, but he also gives thanks to the things God will accomplish in and through him. So Jesus gives thanks numerous times in the Bible. If you do a study, every time it's different than your and my thanksgiving. I just give one example. That's the Last Supper. So Last Supper, recorded in Matthew 26, and they were eating, and then Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave to the disciples and said, Take, eat, and this is my body. Wait a minute. At that time, Jesus was not crucified yet, but he already gave thanks for the bread and saying, this is my body. When I read this Thanksgiving, I cannot help but marvel at what Jesus saw and his love for us. What he saw was that through his crucifixion, you and I can be reconciled with God. So he gives thanks in spite of the fact that he is going to die. And back to our story. And Jesus took the bread and the fish. He looked up to heaven. Why did Jesus look to heaven? And this gesture was recorded in all three Gospels except John. In Matthew, in Mark, in Luke. Jesus looked to heaven and then gave thanks. Jesus looked to heaven where the Heavenly Father is and to see what the Heavenly Father sees. So if you are like me, a mere human being, oftentimes we look at our circumstances. And if we just look at our circumstances, there's no way, absolutely no way, we can give thanks in all circumstances. Because we have sick relative loved ones at home. And our schoolwork may be really tough. Maybe some relationship are really messy. Maybe our job is in jeopardy. Maybe our financial situation really needs help. If we look at our circumstances, it's really hard to give thanks in all circumstances. So at this moment, Jesus demonstrated what we ought to do. We look up to heaven. 
after Jesus looked up to heaven, he no longer only saw five loaves and two fish. He saw the amazing miracles Heavenly Father is going to perform in and through him. I know that I'm preaching to somebody who needs this message. Perhaps your circumstances is really tough. But God is asking you to look up to heaven. Look up to heaven. What would you see? What would you see in heaven? When you look up, as Jesus did, what would you see? First one, we would see the Lord is sovereign. He's in control. Because of Him, we are eternally reconciled. And we no longer have any condemnation, just like Romans 8, 1 says. There's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And one of the Bible verses really struck me in one of the mission trips when I was in China is Colossians 3.1. It says, We have been raised with Christ, set you hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. And just now, the worship team led us to sing the worthy is the Lamb. And when we look up to heaven, we would see the Lamb sits at the right hand of God, sovereign, interceding for us on behalf of us. When we look up to heaven, we would see that our identity as the beloved children of Almighty God. In 1 Corinthians, it says, In Christ, if we have hope in this life only, we are, of all people, most to be pitied. Meaning, if we, own, if we as Christians, we can only look at current earthly circumstances among all people, we are to be pitied most. So brothers and sisters, look up to heaven. And this eternal hope is critical. Ultimately, all we will accomplish on earth will be wiped away by time. Time is a cruel machine. Give enough length, it will wipe away any meaningful memory of anything and anybody. Let me say it again. Time is a really cruel machine. It will wipe away anything and anybody have left behind on people's mind. So life without eternal hope is so hard to live. I would imagine it's impossible to live unless we numb ourselves to this pain of meaningless And, but with this eternal hope, we can face anything. So when Stephen, the disciple Stephen, was stoned to death, and he looked up to heaven, he saw and he said, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. And then they were stoning him, and Stephen before he died, he said, Lord, do not hold this sin against them, the people who are killing him. With this eternal hope, we can give thanks in all circumstances. And a few weeks ago, when a CHPC preacher, um, Chanuk, preached, I don't know if you remember, but one thing he said really struck me. And it leave me in a state of joy for a couple of weeks. He said, and I quote, In Christ there's really no condemnation. All God's wrath 
has been settled on Christ. So there's no more wrath on those who are in Christ. You and I, after we receive the salvation, we are permanently sealed like a grace testifying from everybody. We're permanently sealed by the Holy Spirit like a king sealed on his law that we are secure, we are permanently secure. Regardless of your earthly circumstances, you can give thanks for the salvation we have in eternity. Purpose Driven Life is a really good book. In day six, Rick Warren says this, and I quote, This life on earth is a temporary assignment. And he further wrote, You must never forget two truths. Life on earth is extremely short in comparison with eternity. And the second thing, Earth is only a temporary residence. And this world is full of challenges. But we, as beloved sons and daughters of Almighty God, can give thanks in all circumstances because we have the eternal security to be with our loving Father in heaven. And the second thing, when we look up to heaven, what do we see? We're going to see we're surrounded by angels. We are protected angels. So who are the angels? In Hebrew, if you look up, it says define angels. Angels are ministering spirits that are sent to help us who will inherit salvation. Angels are helping spirits, are sent to help us, God's sons and daughters. There's countless hurt, injuries, and risks that are shielded by our angels around us. There's a story recorded in 1 Kings 6, so that when Elisha, at that time, and with Israel army, surrounded by Syr Syrian armies. And then, and then, let me read you this story. When the servant of the man of God rose early in the morning and went out, behold, an army of horses of chariots was all around the city. And the servant said, Alas, my master, what shall we do? He said, Elisha said, Do not be afraid, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. For those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Me, and then Elijah prayed, Lord, please open his eyes so that he can may see the servant eye, servant for Elijah. So the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. The mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. Even right now, in this room, we are surrounded by angels. When you go out, you are surrounded by angels protecting you, guiding you, even though you cannot see them. But Elisha prayed, Please open his eyes that he may see. So the Lord opened his eyes. He saw that the mountain is full of chariots and horses all around them. And this morning I pray, you look up to heaven and you saw you are surrounded by angels that God sent to protect you protect your family, and protect the church. And the third one, if we look up to heaven, we would see 
the Holy Spirit has been sent from heaven into us. And in 1 John, it says, Dear children, you are from God and have overcome the, meaning the evil spirit. At that, that time, 1 John was talking about the, all kinds of evil spirit will enter the world. But he assured us as children of God, says, The one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. The one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. We are not left as orphans, Jesus said. He's sending us a comforter, a teacher, a helper to guide us, help us, and strengthen us. So yesterday's baptism was awesome, right? And when we received the salvation, from Christ. Jesus did not leave us as orphans. He sent Holy Spirit, the pure, mighty Holy Spirit, into our mortal being so that we can connect with Almighty God. Today's story, the miracle. So after Jesus look up to heaven and give thanks. And Jesus broke the bread and gave the bread to disciples. And then disciples gave the bread to the 5,000 people along with their children and their wives. And then the scripture says they all ate and is satisfied. Are you hungry this morning, spiritually? Are you feel like you really need a breakthrough? So let's look up to heaven. First, remember the Lord is in control. He is sovereign. And we, as His beloved children of God, are eternally secure in Him, in Christ. And we are forever secure in His salvation. Then let's look up to heaven to see we are surrounded by angels. Those who are with us are more than those who are against us. Let's look up to heaven to see the Holy Spirit that being sent has been sent from heaven into our heart. So I want to do something uh, this morning. Just let us exercise this sense feeling. So first, let's just give thanks to the Lord quietly. And uh, this music the first three minutes is a meditation. And the last minute, you can pray aloud to give thanks to the Lord loudly. So that's where the, actually a little bit of Chinese lyrics will come in. That's the cue, you know, that you can praise the Lord loudly. Let's thank the Lord in this Thanksgiving season for not only the things He has bestowed us, but he, the things that he is going to accomplish in and through us.
Let's pray. Glorious heaven, the Father, Lord, we thank you for not only for the blessings we have received, we also thank you for the greater miracles you are going to perform, perform in and through us, in and through this congregation, in and through each one of us, in and through each one of our families. And Lord, you are a God of healing. You are the God of miracles. And we praise you for all the things you are going to do. Lord, we look up to heaven. We know that you are more than conquerors. And you are more than overcomers. You have accomplished. And we shall receive in faith what you are going to do in and through us. We give you all the thanks. And Lord, help this congregation. Help this congregation. Help us to have this perspective, Lord, so that we can give you thanks in all circumstances, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray and ask. Amen. So, um, so we have actually Sean uh, among us. Uh, yesterday, um, Sean shared a little bit uh, in our among our teams. We still have a little bit of time. Maybe uh, Sean, do you want to say a few words? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Five minutes. I'll uh, do a quick, quick intro for Sean. So Sean is actually among the first the um, ministry uh, person that helped with the uh, with our uh, English ministry, and he discipled the first group of students who are now actually graduate from college. Uh, so without further